Okay. Um, so we are going to start out with a cell and I'm hoping that my drawing skills are gonna keep up with this process. Okay. So here's the cell and this is the nucleus, okay? Inside the nucleus, that's where the DNA is, okay? And we typically show chromosomes um, as lines when we are talking about them in mitosis and meiosis. Now, do they actually look like lines? Um, kind of, like you can look at pictures of cells that are actually going through mitosis and meiosis and all of the DNA is super packaged into these like squiggly masses. And so they kind of do look like lines. Um, or like chubby spaghetti noodles or something like that, or maybe some udon or something. <laughs> um, but we draw them as lines. And so what I'm gonna do now is uh, draw two chromosomes that are roughly the same size, but different colors. And the reason why we have two different colors is because, so this whole process is circular, right? This cell is gonna go through mitosis to make new cells, but it also was created at some point, right? And the way that this cell or its way back, back, great, 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 great grandparent cell was created, um, meaning in that, in that person, the person started as a fertilized egg. The way it was started was that it got some DNA from the sperm, right? Like we all started out uh, as a uh, sperm and an egg coming together. So there's a sperm. This is going to be the egg with its green chromosome. And those came together during sexual reproduction to make a cell. Okay. Um, and that's why we show what we show different colors to indicate a maternal chromosome. So right now I'm showing the green as maternal and uh, the purple is paternal. So that's what um, the different colors are. Okay. Does it really matter for like how the process of meiosis, happen meiosis happens? No, um, but it is good to keep uh, straight. So hopefully that makes sense. Or if it doesn't, hopefully it'll start to make sense. Okay. Some of this stuff is kind of like, once you hear it a couple of times, then it starts soaking in, but not necessarily the first time. Um, the other thing is some terminology, okay? so. Um, these are what we call homologous chromosomes, and I am not going to try to put that out. I am going to insert text box. Homologous chromosomes. Um, so homologous chromosomes is a term that some people like it can take a while to get the idea of it, but basically homologous chromosomes are two of the same chromosome type uh, and you've got one from mom and one from dad. So because of sexual reproduction, find some slides. I think I have some slides. Um, hopefully you remember from when we were talking about DNA. Don't I have any slides with it? Ah, oh, there we go. Um, so this is like a picture of someone's actual chromosomes. Um, and as you can see, so this is from a human, we have uh, 22 pairs of chromosomes that are the same size of each other. Um, and the idea is that one came from mom and one came from dad. And so they're homologous pairs or homologous chromosomes. Um, they do not carry identical genetic information, but they do carry genes for the same traits. Right, and this is getting into genetic stuff, which we're getting into next week. So it's good to start thinking about it. Um, for every gene, there can be different versions of it. Um, it's really easy to think of if you think about eye color, which um, eye color is not actually determined by just one gene, but we could kind of really oversimplify things and think, okay, like I have eye color, everybody has eyes. Well, most people have eyes and um, have eye color and say you could have brown eyes, you could have blue eyes, you could have green eyes, right? So it's different versions of the eye color gene. So that's one way to think about it or different alleles of the eye color gene. So if you think for every gene that we have, for every part of the DNA, including the regulatory sequences and the non-coding sequences, 
uh, you get one version of that for mom and one from dad. And those chromosomes that carry the same gene same genes, um, but not necessarily the same alleles, are called the homologous chromosomes. So we have 22 that are exactly identical to each other. And then we have the X and the Y chromosome um, that uh, the Y chromosome actually doesn't have a bunch of stuff that the X chromosome does. And it just mainly has something uh, that determines uh, male characteristic development. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about genetics. So these are homologous chromosomes right here, okay? Um, and we could draw some more. So often we will start out with a cell uh, that has more than one pair of chromosomes. In our drawings, we don't usually go above having two pairs of homologous chromosomes because it's just confusing and there's just too many chromosomes um, to look at. And I actually should make this a little bigger if I can. Tell me, you guys can uh, tell me how you figure, can see things okay or not. Um, and so the homologous chromosomes, we could now say, I'm gonna highlight in yellow, these two are homologous chromosomes. I know that because they're the same size. And these two are homologous chromosomes. I know that because they're the same size, okay? Um, and right now we have two maternal and two paternal chromosomes, right? We said the maternal ones are green and the paternal, maternal ones are green, paternal is uh, purple, okay? Okay, so that's homologous chromosomes. Um, so, and then there's something called ploidy. Either cells are diploid or haploid. And that has to do with how many copies of each chromosome you have, okay? Um, so if you have two copies of each chromosome, that means it is diploid. Okay. So basically, if there are homologous chromosomes present, then that cell is diploid. Um, and that breaking that word down might help you remember it. So di means two. Uh, remember we had disaccharides because they had two monosaccharides stuck together. And then ploid is referring to, it's a word that basically is referring to chromosomes. I'm not sure what the exact like translation is, but so this means two chromosomes. It doesn't mean two chromosomes total, it means a pair, okay? You could have an organism, and some plants actually have this, that are triploid or even hexaploid, where there's six copies. Lilies have a lot of chromosomes, um, chromosome, uh, like <laughs> a lot of homologous chromosomes. For a lily plant, they would have six uh, of the same chromosome, six six actual chromosomes, but we only go up to having two. Um, and then, so this cell would definitely be diploid because there are homologous chromosomes present, right? So we could uh, draw a circle around the homologous chromosomes. So here's a pair of homologous chromosomes and here's a pair of homologous chromosomes, okay? So if you can do that, then it is definitely going to be a diploid cell. Um, and if there's only one copy of each chromosome, that is something called haploid, All right? And haploid, so if we were going to turn this cell into a haploid cell, let me get rid of that, we would need to get rid of some of these chromosomes, right? So if we got rid of those, then it'd be haploid. Uh, notice that these are haploid. Right, so eggs and sperm are always haploid and other cells that are not eggs and sperm, they're called somatic cells, basically all the other cells <laughs> um, are always diploid in humans. Um, it's a little different for some other organisms, but most organisms follow this same plan of like the, uh, the only cells that are haploid are the ones that are for reproduction. So we call those gametes. Those are the eggs and sperm, generally called gametes. All right, so that takes care of some terminology. And I know I'm spending a lot of time on the terminology, but like if you don't have a good grasp of the terminology, then when I start throwing these terms around, nothing's gonna stick because you won't have the framework. Um, so you gotta, you do have to have the terminology first. 
Um, so, and then there's something else called sister chromatids. Before this cell can replicate and make copies of itself, it first needs to get enough DNA to, to spread out into new cells. And so what happens is that each chromosome actually replicates itself. Now we're not, your book does have information about this. I've chosen to skip over the details of DNA replication because um, it gets very confused in people's minds with uh, gene expression because it looks kind of similar. And I found teaching those things side to side just made it impossible for students um, many times, to, especially since we go so fast to separate them out. And so I decided not to cover that in detail, but instead to just say like it replicates and then you have two copies of it. And the interesting thing is they stay stuck together. So you have these two chromosomes and they're stuck together in the center at something called the centromere. And centromere is actually really important because it's where spindle fibers grab the chromosomes to move them around in the cell. Um, and then you have these, this new term called um, sister chromatids. So chromatid refers to when you have this replicated chromosome. Okay, so this is one replicated chromosome. Um, when you have chromatids, it's just one of those. So the sister chromatids are, let's see, good way to indicate it. So this is one sister chromatid and this is the other. Interestingly, we still call this one chromosome until they're actually separated and then there's two chromosomes. Um, so this is one chromosome and this is one replicated chromosome, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and draw these in as replicated because before the cell can start any kind of cell division, mitosis or meiosis, it first needs to go through um, DNA replication. And that occurs in something called interphase. So interphase is um, broken up into different parts, like part of it, it when the cell is just doing its job and some cells just stick, stay there, they just do their job. Other cells that are um, get the signal or are destined to divide, they will get um, they will go into something called S phase, where they replicate their chromosomes, right? And then when that once that's done, they go into something called G two phase, where it's um, the cells basically like checking, like, am I big enough? Do I have everything? Did my DNA replicate properly? Am I ready to start dividing? Okay. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take this cell and I'm going to modify it a little bit um, and take it through the process of meiosis. And then we can do that also with, sorry, we're going to do mitosis first and then meiosis. And I'm hoping this will be a good use of our time. It will, it will take a little bit, but um, hopefully it will be worth it. It won't take that long for mitosis actually. Okay, so we're gonna start out, oh, one more thing. We're gonna start out with a cell. It is diploid. So um, a, an abbreviation for diploid is 2N. For some reason, this took me forever to figure out what the heck that meant. Like when I was in school, it didn't make sense to me, but N, the N stands for the number of chromosomes uh, of each type, right? Um, and so we have two of each type. So that is diploid. Haploid is if we just have one. So these are haploid and we call that just N. So both of these cells are abbreviation for haploid. It's just N. Where just like in math, there's kind of like a, an implied one in front of it. One N you would say is just N also. So not, those are kind of confusing notations. Okay, so this one is 2N and 2N equals four. What that means is there are four chromosomes total and there's two of each type. Now, you could have one that was 2n equals six. It's always gonna be something even. You couldn't have 2n equals seven, right? Because you have to have two of each. Um, in which case, if we wanted a 2n equals six cell, we'd need to draw in another uh, set, of, set of chromosomes, some other size, say it's super little tiny. I'm not gonna actually uh, go through that because I don't wanna <laughs> deal with that many chromosomes, but you could do it, right? And actually for our cells, we are 2N equals 23 or equals 46. So we have 23 types of chromosomes. 
We are certainly not going to draw that out. That would just be ridiculously tedious. Okay. So this cell, uh, let me get my pen straight here. Does that work? Ugh. Be kind of annoying. Oh well. Um, so this cell is um what you would say it's like at the end of interface and it's ready to go into mitosis. We know it's ready because it has replicated cells. Okay. And so then it's going to start. And the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to go into a phase called prophase. <laughs> My excellent writing. Uh, prophase. So in prophase, a couple of things happen. For one, the nuclear envelope actually disappears because so it starts breaking up. So that's the nuclear envelope right here holding the DNA together. Um, it starts breaking up and disappears. The whole cell is given over to this, this process of um, separating the DNA. Okay? And then we have our chromosomes. They are going to um, stay separate from each other. The homologous chromosomes don't associate with each other like they do in meiosis. And each one of them has, from these microtubule organizing centers, they have these uh, fibers come out and grab them from each side at that centromere. Okay, so that's kind of messy, but that's what's going on. And then the, the, what those fibers allow the cell to do then is to move the chromosomes around, okay? Um, and the first thing that they do is move the chromosomes to the center of the cell. Um, and this is the next phase is called my um, metaphase. Um, and there, those um, the chromosomes are aligned at the center of the cell. Um, and they can align in kind of like any order. It doesn't matter. Uh, the homologous chromosomes are not associated with each other. And if you understand meiosis, you will know why I'm saying that. Um, and those spindle fibers are still attached. Right. So that one I didn't draw attached, it should go to right here. <laughs> um, I don't know how important that is. I think you get the idea. So that's metaphase. So you always can tell a cell is in metaphase when cells are, or when the chromosomes are aligned at the equator, you could show it going up and down, diagonal, sideways, whatever. People call it a metaphase plate, um, but that's actually not like a real structure. It's just the middle of the cell. Okay. And next, uh, the cell is going to enter something called anaphase. I'm gonna run out of room slide. In anaphase, uh, those spindle fibers are going to start shortening. Those fibers are going to start shortening, and it's going to actually pull the uh, sister chromatids apart um, and towards the poles. So one thing to keep in mind is this process is very continuous, right? Like we're showing a little snapshot of each phase, but really once a cell starts mitosis, it's just going to proceed through it, okay? And anaphase is actually going to uh, occur as soon as the chromosomes begin to be pulled apart. Um, let's see if I can do an okay job of drawing this uh, by the spindle fibers. So you could draw anaphase in kind of multiple uh, multiple spots where the chromosomes are, if you will. Okay. And the reason why I've shown them in that shape is because they're, they're kind of like little strings, right? Or like floppy spaghetti and they're being pulled at the center. So if you put a piece of floppy spaghetti down um, on the table and you pull it from the center that the ends are gonna trail behind. Or if you did that in water, the ends would trail behind and that's what's happening. So these are going to be moving. They're all moving in the direction of the microtubule organizing centers here, which are at the poles of the cell. And I did not name this. This is anaphase. Oops, wrong color. That's okay. Okay, 
So that's anaphase. Um, and anaphase keeps happening all the way until those chromosomes reach the poles. And once they reach the poles, then we enter something called telophase. And um, sometimes, well, let's see, I'll just draw it first. What's gonna happen, right, is these are gonna continue to be drawn towards the poles and eventually they're gonna meet the poles. And then you'll have on each side, you'll have uh, a long green maternal chromosome and a short one and a long purple paternal chromosome and a short one. Right, and then the nuclear envelope is gonna start reforming around each of those. So this is telophase, it's kind of at the beginning of telophase. What's also happening is uh, it's starting to pinch off in the middle and you're getting a division between these two cells that's called cytokinesis. So usually I just kind of say telophase and cytokinesis, they are technically two different things. Oh my, that was bad handwriting. Um, cytokinesis is technically the division of the cytoplasm. Um, and whereas telophase is the you know coming together of the chromosomes at the poles and that nuclear envelope reforming. Okay. And then at the end, you're going to get two new cells. Okay. They're each going to have a nucleus. And in that nucleus, they're each going to have um, uh, two copies of each chromosome, one maternal and one paternal. Okay. And so you get at the end, you get two haploid, sorry, two diploid cells. You know what, I really wish South Seattle College would like invest in tablets for their professors and for their teachers with the ability to write on them. I think that would help, but they, no, <laughs> of course not. Um, that would be an amazing thing. Um, so we get two diploid cells, we call them daughter, daughter cells. And the thing to remember is that they're actually identical to the one that started. Now, might not look identical because this well, these ones don't have replicated chromosomes, whereas these ones do. But these ones only have replicated chromosomes, or this one only has replicated chromosomes because it started out in G2 phase of interphase ready to replicate the cell that, that it, before it looked like these. Okay. So these are actually identical to each other genetically. They each have one uh, purple, long purple, one long green, one short purple and short green or, you know, like the full complement of, of um, chromosomes. We start out with the diploid cells, we end up with diploid cells, 2n equals four for all of these, okay? And in fact, we actually, so this is called the parent cell, and these are called the daughter cells, but interestingly, the parent cell, unlike humans, right? You know, like <laughs> when we reproduce, we don't like divide ourselves in half and suddenly, you know, now we're one of the offspring. Um, that would be asexual reproduction, we don't do that. But that's what's happening here. So the parent cell, divided itself and now is two daughter cells. And then each of those cells could go on to replicate again. Okay, so this is mitosis in a nutshell. Um, let's see, does anybody have any questions about uh, mitosis? I'm good so far. Awesome, thank you, thanks for the feedback. All right, um, let's go to a new slide. So it'll be harder to do um, meiosis, um, but all that stuff that we just learned about the homologous chromosomes, the sister chromatids, the replication, all of that um, is identical. Um, when we talk about, uh, let's see if I can grab this. Can let me grab that? Um, when we talk about meiosis. Okay, so we can start with the same cell, right? Um, the goal now, when we talk about meiosis, um, 
is to make gametes. And remember, gametes have to be haploid. Why do gametes have to be haploid? Well, when they combine, they need to make a diploid cell. Um, if the gametes are not haploid, if they were, say, diploid, then when they combine, then you double the chromosomes. Um, and you could very quickly see that then if that cell went on to, uh, to have be uh, gametes and came together, there'd be an exponential increase in the number of chromosomes, um, which our whole setup is designed to have two of each chromosomes. And sometimes uh, mistakes do happen in meiosis that can result in people ending up with three chromosomes of certain types. Um, and a lot of times that just is completely non-viable. Other times it is viable, but can cause some changes to the person um, uh, who has that genome. Okay, so we're starting out with this 2N cell and meiosis, we're gonna divide it eventually into four haploid cells. There are two type parts to meiosis um, and it is helpful to divide them up uh, when we're thinking about it, okay? In meiosis one, um, I'm just gonna type this out. My, okay, uh, meiosis one, the goal is to separate uh, the sister chromo uh, the homologous chromosomes. So, in other words, to go from a 2N state to a N state. Okay. So that's the point of meiosis one. Um, that's good to keep in mind um, as we go through this. Okay. All right, I'm gonna zoom in and hopefully make this work. All right, we still have the same phases of, uh, of cell division. So we have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. However, when we do, are doing meiosis, we have meta, prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one for meiosis one, and then the same, but with a two behind it for, uh, for meiosis two. It's kind of nice because you just have to remember those terms once, but it's also kind of bad because there's so much overlap, right? You're like, now I have to use the same terms, but have different definitions for them, basically, of what happens. So that's, you know, that's a pretty big cognitive load for your brain to figure out. Um, so we're starting here with the cell that is going to be in uh, just as before. It's going to be um, at the end of uh, interphase, past the point where it's replicated its chromosomes. If it doesn't replicate its chromosomes, it can't go through cell division. And the first thing that's gonna happen is uh, prophase one. So I'm just gonna say P1 because I can't write things out very well. And in P1 of metaphase one, uh, the, the, what do we call it? Nuclear envelope is also gonna disappear. Um, we do have the spindle fibers coming out, but very first and most importantly, what happens is that we get the homologous pairs of chromosomes, I uh, almost said hooking up, <laughs> which would maybe not be completely appropriate, <laughs> linking together, um, they buddy up with each other. So they find uh, their pair and they uh, stick together. And so we have these homologous pairs forming. And then now they act as a unit. Okay. Also, interestingly, something really important happens that uh, we're not going to focus on too much because it complicates things, but something called crossing over happens between these and the ends of the chromosomes like break off and swap. Um, so like, in other words, a little bit of this green uh, maternal chromosome would pop over and switch places with a little bit of the purple paternal chromosome. This is actually really important because it increases genetic diversity with possibilities within offspring, which is highly favored by evolution and natural selection, because if you put a lot of offspring out there um, with a lot of different possibilities for their, uh, for their genes, for the versions of the genes that they have, um, then there's more possibilities of having at least one survive. And so ways to increase uh, genetic diversity within uh, the offspring have been highly favored by natural selection. So that's why we have that. So we have the crossing over. 
Um, and then of course we have those spindle fibers attached. Now they're gonna be a little bit easier to draw because they're just gonna attach onto here. Okay, next up, we are going to have metaphase. I'll just say meta, meta one. I don't wanna put M1 because that's what we call meiosis one. So metaphase one is also just like when we talked about it for mitosis, we do see the um, chromosomes line up at the center, but importantly, what's lining up now are the homologous chromosome pairs, okay? And so they are gonna line up at the center. And one thing to note is that each chromosome pair is just gonna come in and line up in the center um, and that's, I didn't do a very good job of the center, but you get the idea, um, in a random way. And it's called random assortment, if you might've read about that. Um, I just sometimes try to stay away from too much terminology because it can get confusing. Um, but what that means is like, it's equally likely that the maternal chromosome end up on one side for this chromosome pair and on the other side for the other chromosome pair. That's as equally likely as the scenario where um, the both the maternal chromosomes end up on one side and the paternal chromosomes end up on the other side um, completely. And that makes a, a big difference for the resulting eggs and sperm. Okay, uh, for just simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Right? We still have those spindle fibers attached. Okay. And then just like we had um, in mitosis, we're going to have anaphase, where those get pulled apart by the spindle fibers. So this is anaphase one. The difference, of course, is that uh, these are going to get uh, pulled, the homologous chromosomes are going to be separated. And so what that means is these two green ones, and I'm just going to draw this X's, get pulled over to this side. towards one pole, whereas the, the purple ones, the paternal chromosomes are gonna get pulled over to the other. I'm not doing like the best job of maintaining the sizes here, but hopefully the general idea is coming across, okay? So the most important thing, this is probably like the most important thing that happens in meiosis got those homologous chromosomes paired up and now we separated them, right? We're gonna separate them and put them into separate cells and that is going to be in telophase. So we have telophase one. And often you're shown cytokinesis happening, um, but I'm gonna say that it doesn't always happen just so you know, like in sperm production, it happens, sperm production happens really fast. Males produce millions of sperm a day. And so there's a, it's just going really fast. The cell's not gonna like pause to, okay, let's reform like two complete cell membranes and uh, let's put the nuclear envelope around each, uh, each center so that we have our chromosomes separate. Okay, now we're gonna take that apart and go into the next phase. That doesn't happen. Um, but for, you know, for when you're learning it, it kind of makes it easier to think of it as them forming two separate cells, right? So we're getting this division down the center where two are going towards one pole and two are going to this other. These two, we're gonna say ended up in this cell, right? So now I'm showing it after telekinesis or after cytokinesis and uh, telophase, okay? And we have, I just said the nuclear envelope doesn't often reform, but I'm gonna show it doing that way. And these two are gonna end up in this cell over here, okay? I'm gonna erase that. And like I said, remember, it could have ended up where they swapped places. And so in that, in that case, we'd end up with like a big, big green and a little purple and, um, and a big purple and a little green, but I'm gonna draw it this way. Okay, so that's the end of meiosis one. Okay, have we gone from a diploid to a haploid stage yet? Can you guys tell me in the chat what you think? Have we have the cells uh, gone from 2N to N?
Anybody else want to answer? Thank you, Jamie, for answering. Haploid, okay. So if you say haploid, you'd say yes to that answer. Anybody else? Anyone? Anyone? So sorry, I'd say yes too. Sorry, my okay, back was um, okay, so I got some yeses and some no's. So let's look at it. Uh, so over here, when we started, we had a cell that had two copies of every chromosome, right? So two, two uh, long ones and two short ones. And they're replicated, but try not to let that confuse you. And here we have one long one and one short one in each. And so these actually are now just N. So they are haploid. Yeah. So now, now we've accomplished actually what we wanted to do in meiosis. Um, we got haploid cells. However, we are not ready to be done with meiosis because we still have the sister chromatids. Remember in meiosis, the whole point of meiosis was to separate those sister chromatids into separate cells. And so that when you end up with the, the outcome, you, have, you don't have replicated chromosomes anymore, you just have a regular single chromosome. And so the same thing is actually true of meiosis too. So in meiosis, uh, it, which is to separate the sister chromatids. Um, so in meiosis two, Two uh, goal is to separate sister chromatids because um, we already have the N. We've already accomplished this goal, so now all we need to do is separate the sister chromatids. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can grab these. That. I'm just going to move these over here. Not that so. <laughs> yeah, okay. So these are the same cells, right? They just go right into meiosis too, but I didn't want to have to um, redraw them. Whoa. Oh, I have the eraser. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So. The thing is, is that each of these cells is going to um, act on its own to go through, <laughs> sorry, uh, to go through meiosis two. Okay, so each one is gonna go through meiosis two. So I'll, I'll draw that for each one of them. And they're gonna go through the same uh, parts. They're gonna go through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, but we'll put a two after it, okay? So the first thing uh, is to enter uh, prophase two, okay? <laughs> P2. Um, if the nuclear envelope has reformed, this is when it would break down. Um, so, We'll just draw it without it then. Um, and then what's gonna happen is the uh, spindle fibers are going to attach to, uh, to the chromosomes, just like they did in meiosis, prophase of meiosis, okay? There's no homologous chromosomes to pair up, so that can't happen. Okay, so we just get those um, spindle fibers attaching, and then each one is going to go into metaphase. And again, uh, the way to tell metaphase is always are the chromosomes aligned at the metaphase plate. This is two. Okay. And in a second here, uh, I'll point out what each metaphase looks like for each of them. And if I forget, let me make sure I know. <laughs> make sure you remind me. Um, so here, the chromosomes are going to align at the center, and here they will align at the center. Okay, notice we don't have homologous chromosomes; we just have um, we just have chromosomes that are composed of two sister chromatids. 
but we do have haploid cells, right? Um, so let's pause here for a second and compare, right? When we had metaphase one of meiosis one, we have homologous chromosomes lined up at the center. When we have metaphase two of meiosis two, we have sister, like the chromosomes with their sister chromatids lined up at the, at the center of the cell, which is exactly like what happens in metaphase, except in metaphase, we had a diploid cell, whereas in meiosis, we have a haploid cell. So I don't know if that comparison kind of helps, maybe, I don't know. I actually can't remember what quiz questions I asked you guys, but sometimes I ask to identify cells that are in meiosis, like, or in metaphase, what part, which metaphase are they in? Okay, um, and then we have um, anaphase two is gonna happen. And there the sister chromatids are going to be pulled apart, which is exactly what happens in, um, in mitosis. So you might be getting the message that mitosis and meiosis two are very similar to each other. Those spindle fibers. Okay. okay, and so now we're gonna get division down the center of these cells, right? So I'm gonna kind of, you know, do the hand-waving magic. And, um, you know, so these are gonna get divided down this, let's get divided down here. And each one of these is gonna form a new cell. So I'm gonna show this at the end of telophase. So each one of these cells is going to give rise to two cells. Each one of these is going to give rise to two cells. And we're going to have, each will have one long chromosome right here and one short, this one here, right? So, um, these chromosomes here are going over to the cell. These chromosomes here are going to this cell. And same down here. So we have one long and one short and one long and one short. <laughs> I didn't give myself enough room there. Um, so you might remember when we set up here, that these could align like this or equally likely to have the purple on one side, like this little purple be over here. If that did happen, we would have a different outcome. We actually wouldn't have, we would have a green with a purple, a green, a big, big green with a little purple and a big purple with a little green. Further, uh, we talked about crossing over and the ends switching. So that would happen too. And if we tried to show that, we could draw little colors at the end, which sometimes I do, but it's very, very tedious and kind of confusing. Um, so if you get this part, that's enough. So telophase two and cytokinesis, phase DK. Okay. And now what we have here, of course, we have haploid cells. We start out with haploid cells, right? So we have two, or excuse me, four and, okay, that's confusing, four haploid cells. And then these can be used to combine with a haploid cell from another individual in sexual reproduction to then produce a diploid um, cell. All right, question about meiosis. I have left us very little time to do the breakout activity, but there might be enough. 